Hey fellow Freaksters, it's Tim from the Moratorium. Just here to remind you that if you enjoy what you hear, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We're just a couple of small town nerds trying to make sweet geek love to your ear holes, and we could use your support. Check out our website for movie reviews, links to social media, merch, movies, and more. You can find us at themoratorium.com. Now that that's out of the way, on with the shenanigans. Welcome to the Moratorium. I'm your host, Tim Kornman. Each week, I will be joined by some esteemed, and I use that term loosely, movie watchers, and breaking down some of the weirdest and strangest films to ever, not necessarily, grace the big screen. These are the deep dive oddities and backroom bootlegs that appeal only to the diehard film fans. So sit back and enjoy the ride into the dark vault of the movie moratorium. I've listened to just my track, you know, it's just me responding to questions that no one is asking. It's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. And it's like better. Some yeah, somehow. somehow. <laughs> I understood it better. I understood the movie better. <laughs> That's it. I try to talk about everything but the movie. Yeah, that should be the name of our podcast. Everything but the movie? Yeah. Same. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's, you know, we get off track a little. Uh, Yeah. I think we're getting better, though, about the, like, talking over each other thing. I feel like I do it a lot, and I'm really trying to just... Sometimes, you know, you just gotta, you gotta shut your yap for a little while. And... But, you know, then crims the creative editing that... We don't talk yeah. over each other. <laughs> <laughs> right. These are, you don't do much editing. It's right. pretty much what we say is what's put out there in the world. That would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere there's just little deleted chunks of me just going, um, hmm. Yeah. It's making noises because I can't seem to not make noises. I wonder if I could put on a back to back as many times as we say um, just to see how long wow. it would go. That's... It would go for days. Yeah, it would end in madness. Yeah, as every one of our podcasts seems to do. I guess that's true, especially the ones that stretch on for a while. I'd like to think that we're getting smarter, but really, I think you pointed out the other day that... Uh, yeah, you know, we're pushing out the good information and loading yeah. it up with shit like, uh, who the fuck is Jim Connell, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever get on Jeopardy and there is a, you know, Alan Fudge category, then we can just... Oh. I'll take Fudge for 500? Yep. <laughs> I am Fudge for 500. <laughs> That's his memoir. I am Fudge. <laughs> oh, Alan, please guide us. It's like our patron saint. <laughs> oh, can we get him in a medallion? <laughs> yeah. I can wear it around my neck. Yeah. And remember, kids, eat your fudge. That's his, <laughs> that's his classic catchphrase. But we need something to protect ourselves from uh, these pesky freaking... Uh, gargoyles. Yep. They're spawns of Satan, I think I found out today. Yeah. I didn't really do a lot of research when I watched this the first time, and then I guess I just realized that it's actually, they're in the Old Testament. And, I mean, it actually does say gargoyles, I think. Hmm. But uh, maybe we should just get into it. Eh, what do you say? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll uncover things as we go. All right. Well, welcome to the moratorium. Yeah, welcome. I'm your host, Tim Kornman. And with me, as always, is my co-host. Co-host? 
co-host. Yeah, me, Jason Walker. I feel like one of these days we're going to nail that opening, but... Nope. Not today. Nope. Not today, my friend. I creative edit it so it makes it sound even worse. I'm Oh, just, cool. I can just crunch it all together, so... Yeah. It's like we're both saying the same thing with our different voices, but at the exact yeah. same time, harmonizing. Is that what you did? La 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 la. <laughs> me 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 me. <coughs> oh yeah, there, <laughs> there we go. There's All the right, much better. I might be talking like this for the rest of the podcast. Okay. You've got Nick Nolte. You know, there's a ton of distortion when the gargoyles speak. Yes, it's. We're probably gonna have to stop and talk about that for a while. Not what I remember them sounding like so much. I mean, now that I know, you know, kind of like what type of technology they were using to give them their voices, but I did not remember them sounding like, how would you even... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's almost like a sci-fi... It sounds like something from Doctor Who. It's like somebody was speaking through R2-D2's asshole. Yeah, yes, exactly. Using R2-D2 as like a gravity bong or something, and then they would just like <laughs> talk through it. They kind of sound like Daleks a little bit, if you really... Yeah, okay. It's like, okay, guys, we have this one effect that we can do, and we're just gonna... That's what we're gonna stick with. That's it. Which in 72, I mean... I, I don't think I realized how old this movie was. Right. This was the year I was born. Mm -hmm. I would like to think that I hold up better than this movie, but... <laughs> I'd like to think that. <laughs> I'd like to think that. I don't even know how we would go about scoring you on that. <laughs> We're going to have to come up with a very sophisticated test to see yeah. if you were... That, so that's what we're going to do. Where you and I are going to put a kind of test together that'll see if you or the 1972 TV movie Gargoyles, <laughs> which of the two has aged better. Right. So. The rubber suits that they're wearing is uh -huh. very similar to the skin I have on my body. Well, so, I mean. Leathery, thick, <laughs> like thick, leathery kind of bunches up in pivot points mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it almost doesn't have a plot i mean it is read it uh <clears throat> me 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 <laughs> this is from imdb after receiving word about a mysterious skeleton unearthed in the arizona desert a father and his daughter visit the man who has it and grab the skull as they escape a shack the gargoyles have attacked. That is the most complicated. That was all one <laughs> sentence. Uh, <laughs> I guess that kind of explains it. Okay, so as they escape, once they do so, they, as well as the town, are besieged by a colony of gargoyles living in some nearby caverns. The town. That's a loose thing yeah. right there is the town. Uh, I mean... There are four things in this town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Willie's freaking little curio shop. Uncle Willie's Museum. Oh, God. I think it's funny that guy that plays Willie. Woody Chambliss? Yeah, his name is Woody in, like, the character name is Woody in, like, a bunch of these old, you know, because he was in a <laughs> bunch of, like, westerns. and and oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But it, it's Willie for this. Like, why didn't you just call him Uncle Woody? I don't know. That would have caused so much confusion. Was there source material where he was named <laughs> Willie and they just didn't want his such a beloved character that they didn't want to change? I don't know. It just seems like it's only a couple of letters off. And it probably would have helped him because he doesn't seem well in this movie. Now, I was just reading in the trivia here just a little bit ago that... Uh, Woody Shambliss, Uncle Willie, he's two years younger than Cornell Wilde in this film. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because he looks like he could be Cornell Wilde's father, probably. Yes. He is the dictionary definition of grizzled. Hmm. But yeah, so father-daughter taken off to the desert to just kind of poke around. The opening scene, what is he picking her up at the airport or something? 
Yeah, I guess she has like a personal jet. Is that what it was? No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe we should just start from like the very beginning because the all the stuff, um, you know, the narration at the beginning, mm-hmm. kind of explaining what gargoyles are, and I, I guess they're explaining what gargoyles are. Gargoyles are fictional creatures. Well, they were. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're saying that? <laughs> Uh oh! Was once the most famous. Oh, yeah, I started playing it right in the middle of it. But anyway, that narration it does set you up, uh, and it looks really cool. I mean, I love these. Um, there's nothing more like '70s than this, like kind of introduction. But he's saying basically that everybody knows we have gargoyles, and it was just a matter of time before they started attacking us. Did I listen to that right? Sure. Sure, and who was it that read this opening? I I saw I don't know. it earlier, and yeah. I was like, "Is it somebody?" I'm sure it's somebody. Maybe it's um, like John Larroquette again. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I'm so lost already. <laughs> so this aired on TV in like November of 1972. This okay. wasn't even a Halloween movie. It wasn't. I talked to Todd about it, a friend of ours, Todd, briefly about it, because I remember watching it as a kid on TV, and, Mm -hmm. you know, it came out a few years before I was born, so I was like, when would I have been, and was old enough to enjoy it, you know? Right. Uh, You know, I was kind of racking my brain trying to think of these, like, because I knew it had to be on, like, an old, like, creature feature, you know, like, late at night, or, or Sunday afternoon, when they used to play, like, Godzilla movies and stuff, and... Todd says, no, I know exactly when I saw it. It was from, I saw it on the Plenty Scary Movie on... Channel 8. He said it was on ABC. Mm-hmm. So I Googled that and just listened to the opening music and stuff. And I was I, I was like, oh, yeah, that that's exactly where I heard it or where I watched it the first time. Awesome. And remember being freaked out and at the same time just, like, loving it, you know? The only thing I really remember from my childhood from this film Mm -hmm. is the gargoyle being hit by what I thought was their car, but no, it was a semi. (laughs) I thought the exact same thing. I thought they hit it, but no, he's just, like, roadkill. He's not paying attention to the crosswalks. No. Do they explain that? Why is he just out? Was he going for a jog or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, so is this Vic Perrin? Was he the uh, Vic Perrin? I think he's the narrator. Narrator. And Vic Perrin actually played um, a voice of a gargoyle. Yeah, while he's in there, just. But he did all sorts of voices for all of our cartoons back in the day. I mean, he yeah, he has a very distinctive voice. We're talking Scooby Doo, Dragnet, wow. Superman, Aquaman Hour. Oh, right. Space Ghost. This has to be all voice work, but it says he was in Watchmen, Mission Impossible. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, Watchmen was for the soundtrack. I see. And Mission Impossible is the TV show from 66. Yeah. I, I got a little confused there. No, he died in 89, so. But we probably heard his voice, I don't know, a billion times. That's crazy. So very interesting. We'll have to look at him some more. Let's let our audience know that you can watch this uh, for free. On, I'm actually on ShoutFactoryTV.com. That's exactly where I saw it too. Okay. And they have all the old, uh, a lot of the old MSTs. If you yeah, just skip uh, on over, yeah. After you get done with this, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I love this font. Yes, the gargoyle font, kind of gooey, drippy font. <laughs> It's like slime, kind of. Yeah, I yeah, dig it. Cool. I mean, this is the epitome of like a '70s movie, like Cornell Wilde shirt. I would kill for his like. It looks <laughs> uncomfortable, actually, to be like walking around in the desert. But it was the '70s. Everything was made out of polyester and what other flammable materials people wanted to. Basically, guys back then were just a Molotov cocktail that hadn't been lit yet. Like, all their clothes would go right up, the stuff in their hair, their aftershave. It was like high karate. was like... And they all smoked. That's probably where, like, spontaneous combustion occurs. 
Just like a gold watch and a medallion and a like pool of grease. Oh, I was just looking at uh, Grace and Hall. Mm-hmm. She plays Mrs. Parks. Yeah. She was only in her 50s when she was in this. She just kind of looks a little bit older, a little mm-hmm. sleazy. It was her idea to have a glass in her hand and through every right. shot. <laughs> yeah. She's like, can I just bring this into the shot with me? Because I'm not <laughs> quite done with it. <laughs> That's I'm what sure. it seemed like. <laughs> Everybody's drunk. We don't care. Because there is a scene later where she goes into the sheriff's office, <laughs> opens up his desk, steals a bottle of his booze to refill her glass. <laughs> that is amazing. I want to live in this town. <laughs> yeah. It seems like there's some just crazy shit going on. So let's get into this a little bit. Uh, we're at the airport. Cornell Wilde's picking up his daughter, right? Cornell Wilde and his daughter are basically the two main characters. Uh, that's Jennifer Salt. She wears everything midriff. Which, you know, that's fine. We're just happy that Cornell Wilde is not wearing the same oh, the same, <laughs> the same top. <laughs> he shows up in the top from, like, oh, the girl from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. See his whole back. <laughs> all of his moles. <laughs> She brings him, I guess, I don't know where she brought it from, but she brought him a statue of a demon. Yeah. And he, what's the name of it? I had it earlier. Kamundi or something? That sounds right. Yeah. I think it's, uh, hang on a second. No, it's Kalamudri. Yeah, there we go. He's like, hey, you brought Kalamudri. Hey, I've been looking for him. We've been waiting to party. I see you turned him into a bong. <laughs> that would be awesome if he like twisted the head out, off of it and it was just a bong. <laughs> or like it had liquor in it or something. That's right. They're getting in the car and he says, Kalamudri will just about complete my collection of demons. Yeah, he's collecting demons. He's got a demon collection. Yeah. I guess in the 70s you could have a demon collection. He's an author. He wrote a book that basically is talking about how demons were not real. Well, he's getting ready to find out that there are some demons, and they're going to talk to him in a bizarrely formal manner through a kid's, like a synthesizer, like an old synthesizer. <laughs> and maybe sign him up for the tri Oh, come on. <laughs> You're waiting for it. <laughs> is that the only thing that you can think of that Bernie Casey is in? Bernie Casey is the main gargoyle, and he, I assume they picked him because he's like six foot four or something. Yeah, he is He is six foot four. Let's just make this gargoyle as big and imposing as we can, but he's like, it is very strange thinking that he is under all that makeup. I'm like, really? <laughs> Bernie Casey? Uh, You're right, though. I started thinking about it, and I was trying to think of the thing that I would know him from the most. Yeah. And I think it's just in the Mouth of Madness. And he's only in it for, like, five minutes until the crazy guy comes through the window. You know, see, and it would have been Revenge of the Nerds all the way for me. Oh, well, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Of course, Um, Revenge of the Nerds. So, uh, Gargoyles, Bill Norton directed it. Kind of looked at him, his stuff for a little bit, and mm-hmm. nothing too exciting, except he's down as the writer for Convoy. Yes. You knew I was going to bring this up. Yes, I was hoping you were going to bring it up. Oh, okay. I love that movie. Uh, he didn't direct it, but he, he wrote it, and mm-hmm. I had to look at Convoy. We're going to look at it here in just a minute, too, because I got a lot more to talk about. Oh, <laughs> about Convoy? Uh, maybe not necessarily Convoy okay. by itself. Okay, because this could easily turn into a Convoy podcast, and I'd just slide right into it like a, like <laughs> a hot tub. A lateral move. Just like, yeah, no, maybe not even. Maybe a kind of step down, but still needs to be discussed. He also directed Baby, The Secret of the Lost Legend. Oh, my God. Yeah, I saw this at the theater. I, oh, <laughs> wow, brag. I saw it. On a endless loop on HBO in the couple of summers after it came out. And I was like, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> it was crap then. It's crap now. So he did a more American graffiti. I think I've actually seen that. It obviously didn't really go over. 
Yeah, you look at his credits and there's a lot of TV. But anyway, I wanted to bring up, I just wanted to bring up Convoy because we're going to circle back around to that here in just a minute. Don't want to talk about Cisco Pike? (laughs) (laughs) James Taylor? Oh, wow. Gene Hackman's in that. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) Harry Dean Snape. HDS is in this. Cisco Pike. A down-in-his-luck former drug dealer is forced by a corrupt LAPD policeman to sell 100 kilos of confiscated marijuana <laughs> in one weekend. Cisco Pike. Starring wow. Chris Christopherson, Karen Black, and Gene Hackman. Those are some good people. Wow. Yeah. Howard Hessman. Dr. Johnny Fever. And a girl by the name of Viva. Yeah, it's just her name, Viva, and she plays... Myrna. Oh, yeah, she looks like a Myrna. <laughs> Not a Viva. She's definitely a Myrna. I don't even know what that means. I hit a wall with that one, with Myrna. <laughs> that first scene where they go to Willie's place uh, is pretty cool. Oh, yes. Actually, that jumps really quickly into the action. Yeah, that's true. It, it doesn't mess around. Did we talk anything about Stan Winston being... No, not This yet. is like his, one of his first projects. Yes. Do you want to take that over real quick? I will, because I'm looking at it right now. They actually won an Academy Award for... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was a primetime Emmy because it's a TV movie. Right. Uh, they won an Emmy for uh, makeup. Outstanding Achievement in Makeup. Wow. Del Armstrong, Ellis Berman Jr., and Stan Winston. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's, you know, what stuck with me probably the most is how good the, I mean, you know, it's low budget, but the makeup, the gargoyle makeup is pretty terrifying, you know, (laughs) which is what makes it so cool when you will get to it. But when they actually talk, it's a weird juxtaposition. I just stumbled across a bit of trivia here that I didn't realize. Let's hear it. Says Bernie Casey's voice was replaced by Vic Perrin's voice in post production. Oh, because his natural speaking voice didn't fit the character of a head gargoyle. Yeah, like we said, the voice is manipulated so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't really tell who it is, but it is very creepy. I think you know. Because you see these things. Well, let's we'll talk about that a little later. When we get to the actual gargoyles, the titular gargoyles, we can talk about it. Let's get moving just a little bit. Just so we we called this little statue that he had the Kalamadra, Kalamudra, whatever. Hey, you brought it up. I couldn't find where I read it, but it said that that demon is not listed. Oh, he's not an official demon. As an actual demon, right? I guess he's still waiting on his papers. So yeah. If we could start a uh, GoFundMe page for the Kalamudra. <laughs> his baseball card isn't worth hardly anything. Right, right. Even with his signature. Right. Because he's not <laughs> a real demon. Huh. It seems like they could have pulled... Maybe they, maybe they didn't want to, you know... Oh, they didn't want to give any real information in case kids like go. picked it up and started like speaking in <laughs> tongues and shit. And... <laughs> I mean, the statue that she hands him looks like something you would find in, like, Spencer's or, like, a head shop or something. <laughs> it's not very... It's not, like, an ancient relic. Yeah, and they don't give us a good close look at it. Is the reason for their little adventure because Willie had gotten a hold of Cornell Wilde somehow? I think so. I think we, we have a small conversation when we meet Willie and we talk with him that... He was kind of plugging his own story and kind of wanted Cornell to back him up. Yeah, to write a book for him. That's what I think. That's what he was selling. I see. Well, I, there's one line of dialogue that is like, uh, you know, well, that's why I brought you out here. You know, like just something in passing. But was he already in the area doing research? I don't know. I don't know. I'm still on their car ride over to Willie's, and, uh, well, they're talking about demonology and what he, uh, you know, this book that he's going to write about 5,000 years of demonology. That'd be the ultimate coffee table book, you know? I would love to have that. 
Boley's book, 5,000 Years of Demonology, will trace a man's conception of evil through the ages. Hmm. Does he say more monsters, more fun and profit? Yeah, more monsters for fun and profit. <laughs> Something colorful and expensive for coffee tables of America. <laughs> more monsters for fun and profit is a way better name for the book than 5,000 <laughs> years of demonology. Kind of punch it up a little bit. Really sell it, guys. It's like a self-help demonology book. So they're trying to find Willie. Yes. Okay. So somehow Willie has contacted them about something that he found. Yes. He just happens to have a curio shop in the middle of nowhere that's like, you know, come see the two-headed snake. Uh, take a look at my lizard collection. Come back into the back room and pay a dollar to be unnecessarily fondled. Oh, I knew you were going to say fondled. I think there's somebody in the back of their uh, station wagon. Oh, man, I just saw it, too. <laughs> I saw his head under a blanket. It's the cameraman. <laughs> or it's the sound guy. Or something like that. It's the That's... sound guy. I can see his head under a little blanket. I was going to let it slide, but since you brought it up, I'll... <laughs> Or they've got a kid back there that's just like playing one of those old electronic games and then they just never mention him. Yeah. He just dies in a hot car while they're being while they're fighting gargoyles. She's like, uh, did Billy come with you? Oh my god. Kalamudri! They had to have something to sacrifice. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, wide open shots. You know, of them mm -hmm. driving down the highway. They're not wasting any time, really. They're jumping right into exposition. Yeah. I think I wrote this down as exposition highway. Yeah. <laughs> Get the whole spiel. Dad, are you lost? No, I'm not lost. I just made a wrong turn way back. Then you're lost. Yeah, that's dude. the definition. <laughs> also, there's just one dirt road. How did you get yeah. lost? I, I dig this when they're in the car, though, when they're stopped and make a three-point turn, right? Mm -hmm. To make a U-turn, this the shadow that goes over the car. Yeah, that was that was kind of cool. creepy. Yeah. Of course, they're not really looking. They're just like, huh, a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to look up into the sky. <laughs> There's literally nothing around us for miles. What the mm. hell made that? Is some kid flying a kite in the desert? <laughs> but then they're just like, huh, well. Yeah. The small cloud that looked like a gargoyle just passed over. I read in the trivia on, on IMDb this whole movie was filmed with one camera. I believe it. <laughs> so it's that guy in the back seat. They're like, please don't drop this camera. This is the only <laughs> one we have. It. The two headed mystery lizard. See the snake den. Uncle Willie's Desert Museum. Some it says cold drinks, but it says something before that. Uh, there was cold. There was cold beer, and he makes a comment of like, yeah. "Well, there's something to stop here for anyway." There's just another building not by the septic tank that just says snakes, <laughs> and no doors on it. So <laughs> I'm already worried. So we got Indian blankets for sale. Oh, curios is what it says. Isn't that a song? No, I'm not going to sing it. Yeah, it was a song. Yeah, I see that he's got. Just a building that says snakes. He's stapled a cowhide to his ceiling in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, we talked about this the other day, though, talking about the movie Resurrection. Oh, yes. She has oh, a healing gosh. touch thing. But yeah, yeah at the end, she kind of runs a, a place like this. See the two-headed snake. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That's a weird ending. I never want to see that movie again. No? Okay, then. Willie just handed him a couple of just warm Coors, uh -huh. like, here, yeah. this, this will really wet your whistle. And she gets startled by this uh, rattlesnake that's in the cage. Yeah. For the next two minutes during their talk, she's tapping on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I don't think you really want to do that. No. She seems dumb. Like, mm. she's not going to survive long. <laughs> She's just the type of girl that would be kidnapped by a gargoyle. I just think it's so weird that in this... I mean, she's like a grown woman in this movie. She's not a teenager, but it's just weird, like, hanging out with your dad in, like, <laughs> bell bottoms and just, like, a tiny bikini top. Yeah. Is that weird? Or am I just... 
it kind of bothered me too. Willie doesn't seem to mind. Nope. Uh, you, you know, oh. I'm younger than your dad. I'm going to show you. <laughs> take you back to the back and show you one of my bones. Hey, 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 don't go away. Did I mention bones? <laughs> Cornell Wilde has the best line ever. And I don't know if I would have, I don't know if I would have caught it except for the closed captioning, but he, right when they walk into this shack, I guess the gargoyle shack. He says, smells like old bones. Yes. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What do That's... old bones smell like? I don't think they have a particular smell, do they? I will have to consult my bonologist. But Willie is like, yes, finally, I've found someone who is on my, you know, just bone smellers. He goes to show them his gargoyle. He's mm -hmm. got a winged gargoyle made up in this shed, right? That's mm -hmm. that he's pieced together. Did he say that it took uh, quite a while to put it together? <laughs> you know, that he found these bones and he put them back together. Right. He found them. I think he said he's been working for a while to put them all back together. But the gargoyles chose this night to try to break in to recover right. the remains. Yeah, that is weird. That is really the basis of... This entire setup is that the gargoyles were just trying to keep a secret that they actually existed. So they were trying to retrieve said bones. Right. Which sort of makes sense. But what's weird is like, are there two types of gargoyle? Well, I think that they said that they were breeders. Okay, so they're different. And are the breeders the winged ones? I don't know. Okay. And the rest are just like worker gargoyles I, I, I guess because then bernie casey straight up looks like a man kind of he's just like a longer nose and bigger teeth <laughs> like a pagoda you know what i mean <laughs> i mean like if he had come out in like a leisure suit or something and then he talks very like polite and like human too maybe he's just evolved you know he's maybe. like the first one of his kind or something I think he points to one of the other gargoyles uh -huh. and is like, speak. So they all have the capability. Use your big words. Come on. He's all about integration. <laughs> he wants to become a U.S. citizen. I assume. So, but Cornell Wilde's not buying this, this no, gargoyle he's... bone skeleton bullshit. Yeah. Pretty good work, old man, but those are human bones and you're a serial killer and the cops just pulled <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> These are obviously <laughs> bones from your victims. Is this where Dr. Forrester got the idea to sew a pig's head onto a fish? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Willie really pours on the kind of exposition stuff, too. Kind of like Boggy Creek. He's got those bones in there, and apparently the gargoyles just... So, earlier, it seems like maybe Bernie Casey was kind of already checking out Diana from afar. Yes. And maybe that, he's just following her. Mm-hmm. You know, he wants to mate. Like you said, he's trying to integrate. Yeah. It's the fastest way to get his citizenship is to marry into Yeah, him. exactly. <laughs> Have one of those kind of fa arranged fake marriages so he can get his citizenship. <laughs> that would be a good plot. Better than what we have here? I think so. You just have a <laughs> montage of him, like, you know, she's writing stuff on the chalkboard, like the, you know, <laughs> capital of Illinois. You know, I think that would work. When he gets her into the cave, the cavern, or their, their mm -hmm. home, and asks her to read to him. Right. You know, I, he finds the sound of her voice pleasing. Yes. And the bikini doesn't hurt either. Tell me tell me more about Archie and Veronica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Willie is laying it on thick. His smell. Oh. Old Bones is not the only smell in this shack. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I guess we are to assume that they've been hanging out. It's, it was broad daylight when they walked back to this other mm -hmm shed or whatever and, and they've been here listening to his story for, for hours, hours. <laughs> hours in a hot ass shed drinking warm beer 
and just listening to the <laughs> ravings of a madman. <laughs> that actually uh, sounds like a Saturday night. That sounds fun. Now that I've set it up, <laughs> now that I've pieced it together and said it out loud. And he's also got a fucking rad monster skeleton. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Dude. This is all I ever wanted in the world. <laughs> he's like, I got a Necronomicon too, if you want to see that. <laughs> That is cool, uh, you know, thinking that, like, a, you know, just a roadside attraction thing has an actual, like, monster in it. Besides Willie. <laughs> He's the true monster. Now, Willie is, has become kind of furtive, and he slowly walks over and just puts a big old bar on the on the door. So, that means that this has happened before. Ah... They have come for the skeleton before. It's a lot like Boggy Creek, where they have the little creature and, you know, the mom or whatever keeps coming by and just, like, scaring the shit out of everybody. You brought it upon yourself. Yeah, exactly. He also says some names, throws out some Indian names that are really hard to pronounce. Nakataka Kicho? Something like that? It's so hard. It it is actually in this very lengthy blog on the last drive in. I read it like six times and still, still couldn't know. He says he says Nanyatana too. Yeah. Which I don't know. Which I think they were talking about either as uh, Hopi Indian, maybe? maybe. But it's spelled N O C I T I C H I N C O S. <laughs> which I read was something like in Greek or mythology uh -huh. that just meant gargoyles. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> they're listening or they're trying to record him and the gargoyles start attacking the shed. <laughs> Willie is bonked on the head by a, by a shelf and mm. set on fire in uh, almost instantly. Yes. Like this shit, it, it it's almost like the gargoyles didn't do it, you know. Everything was just a ticking time bomb. Like that shelf, it was barely taped up. <laughs> yes, it's like the whole shed was just held together with a few like strategic bones, and if you mess with them, the whole the whole thing comes down. <laughs> that made me laugh, though. It kind of looks like. Uh, Willie, what's his name? Woody, Woody Shambliss. Mm -hmm. It really does look like the actor and, you know, it's all like foam and stuff, but he really gets clobbered and then it's like gallons of kerosene <laughs> spill. And... There's whiskey barrel, wooden yeah. barrels that say kerosene on it. <laughs> yes. It was basically like living on a ticking time bomb. This was bound to blow at any time. Mm -hmm. So he goes to basically grab the skull. Mm -hmm. He's trying to save his artifact. Right. Even with him getting bonked on the head. Yeah. And a lantern falls and catches him on fire. Our good doctor does nothing really to save him. No. But then uses a two by four to scrape that skull over to me. Exactly. You didn't believe in this five hours or five minutes ago. His foot is touching your foot. And you're not even going to try to, like, throw a blanket on him or something. I'm not even going to piss on him. Yeah. I've got a quick question, okay? And okay. I, I just saw this. It's at 1738, where Jennifer Salt and Cornell, they're running out of the shack that's on fire. Mm -hmm. It looks like somebody has thrown a dead bird a chicken. at her. No, it's, it's a, a chicken? live chicken. Okay. Somebody threw a live chicken at her. And the closed captioning, I, I'm almost there. Does it say cluck? It, yes, I think it says <laughs> in brackets, chicken cluck. <laughs> the closed captioning in this has like saved my life and is really funny. Chicken squawking <laughs> is what it says. So, and then she <sighs> runs around back into the shed that's on fire. If, I mean, if it had been yeah. up to her, she would have burned to death because she's scared of chickens. Cornell has to turn her around and point her towards the car. Yeah, that shed goes up like freaking 
Waco. Like, it's instantly <laughs> engulfed in flames. Was there a, like, key grip off to the side just throwing chickens at Diana? I think so. I think so, Diana. That's a weird choice. It was very kind of like a little Evil Dead-ish where they were recording Willie. Was he saying that there was a ceremony that would, like, turn a man into a gargoyle or something? I missed a lot really? of that. Mm, you might have to go back and... I, I Surely there's not. Just goes nowhere. But... I don't know. I think you're on to something. That'd be cool, like, the end of The Howling, if uh, Diana would just, like, turn into a gargoyle, too, somehow. That would be awesome. Paint her green and leave that red top that she has on. And bell bonnets. <laughs> All right. So the shack is on fire. Willie has died. They have no remorse on oh, that. We don't know that. <laughs> Willie might still be alive. They never checked. They never check. Although, yeah. all the spilled whiskey on his pantsuit uh, and his beard. That's what made him so flammable. Basically, <laughs> just kindling. So, Willie had a good life, I think. Sure. But if you really, if you look at him when he's trying to explain, when he's doing his exposition, you look at his face and he's two years younger. I, then Cornell Wilde, that is just, crazy. I guess that's just the difference between a demonologist and a uh, <laughs> roadside... A curio yeah. museum curio. Haver. <laughs> <laughs> His long career as a curio haver. <laughs> um, so they don't really seem too concerned when they're driving no. away. It's like kind of easy no, breezy. They're like, oh. You know, Shit happens. Uh, all of that can be explained. That was yeah. nothing. It was wolves. Remember that old guy? <laughs> but they play this uh, audio tape back several times. Yeah, while somebody's shaking the car off to the left <laughs> <laughs> and working the smoke machine. When you see the uh, the gargoyle, I love the steam or yes. the smoke coming out of the back of the car. Yes, it's kind of a red light back then. But when the gargoyle comes up on top of the car, it kind of is reminiscent of, like, Halloween, right? Yeah, when Michael a little bit. comes up on the top of the car. Kind of Lost Boys, too. That's, that's kind of the same lighting. So they drive with him on the top, and he's basically going, Wee! Like, yeah. it's, he's <laughs> having a blast up there. And Cornell Wilde is just jerking that car back and forth. I love his fake driving in that scene. And even... Jennifer Salt, like, like her head dips towards the, oh. you know, she's like really she's selling playing it. playing it. Yeah. yeah. Slapping her head against the window. Have some fun. So here's another, <laughs> another gas station. And I don't, they haven't had a real good track record with flammable stuff. So. Yeah. Maybe you should wait until somebody pumps the gas for you. Yes. So the gargoyle gets thrown from the hood of the car, yep. and they just go off to a gas station. And one of the only few standing structures. <laughs> yeah, in the entire movie. They just burnt down one of them. Right, <laughs> yeah. They're in like Death Valley or something, and I still don't seem very concerned about what's going on. No, no, they play off what happened to the car. Hey, can you fix this? It looks like somebody clawed the hood of the car. <laughs> it's just deep gouges. The guy's like, yeah, it's midnight. Sure, I'll get to work on your... I'll get your hoopty fixed up. Yeah. Good. Hey, where where are you in the film? Uh, they got to the hotel. You get to see the creepy... What's her name? What's her... The Hello, lady that wanted to drink in every scene? Her name is Grayson Hall. Yeah. She's playing Mrs. Parks. So she is the... Uh, the maybe the owner, the proprietor maybe. of this hotel, In the and what of she's immediately just oh, you wouldn't believe what I've seen up here. Hey, yeah. why don't you stay for a nightcap? Stay for a nightcap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They get a hotel room from her apparently, and um, I, I mean, it's the seventies, but Jennifer Salt cannot be bothered with a bra. <laughs> no bra through this entire thing. But again, it's the 70s. So they're like, 
so tired that they can't get a hold of the police that night. So they just sleep it off, and um, I guess they're going back to Willie's with the police to find Willie. Willie's still smoldering body. I do love this. That she's sleeping, by the way, and he keeps playing that tape over and over. Yeah. She awakes from her slumber <laughs> to her own screaming on <laughs> yeah, that's, cassette tape. That cannot be good for you. She did not reach uh, deep REM sleep with that. But he did say that it was noon. She was still asleep. He's, you know, ready to go. And it's noon. You haven't gone to the cops yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he could he could still be alive. Willie is just less important than anything. Willie basically sacrificed his life so that uh, this guy could write a book. Yes. With his brawless daughter. And <laughs> this scene with the, the... It's not even a gang. It's just a bunch of guys riding dirt bikes in the desert. Yeah. Why does the sheriff, like, immediately jump out? And his deputy has a shotgun on them. Yes. Oh, they well, are ready to kill them. Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are they so trigger happy i don't know maybe there's a backstory on this yeah, i'm sure there is roving gang of dirt bikers if you're in the 70s and you're in a town like this this um phenomena will occur naturally there will be a cracker sheriff and a young punk for him to chase mm. it's like a requisite thing in all uh, small towns I think, you know. You think. Maybe they just needed to fill some time. Mm -hmm. Because when they start chasing down Scott Glenn and the other motorcyclist. Yeah, that eats up a few minutes. Oh, my. It's like a Dukes of Hazard scene, basically. And it almost looks like they may have sped it up a little bit. Yeah, I was. I noticed that, too. Also, that's the sheriff driving that giant car. Deputy still got his shotgun. When he pulls out to go chase... Mm -hmm. the bikers he almost hits diana she had to move back he almost clips her cornell grabs her by the shoulder thank god <laughs> because she for sure would have broken both of her legs taking out both kneecaps yeah but this chase is kind of fun yeah you know yeah it goes on for quite some time yeah he probably would have shot at him before now <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> But I think they're give, given a chance to set up. Have you mentioned that it's Scott Glenn? <laughs> the guy in blue is Scott Glenn. Yeah. There's only a few lines from other of the so-called gang. Uh, one of them is a stuntman. Of course, yes. Who is also a gargoyle. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I feel like a lot of people on this had like double roles, you know. Oh, yeah. Jennifer, can you please hold this boom mic out of frame? Yes. <laughs> Put some clothes on. <laughs> I mean, the sheriff's basically like, well, hell, if you guys weren't around, we would have executed them already. Yeah. <laughs> but you're saying they didn't do anything against the law? Huh. Yeah. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. When the the friend purposefully runs into Scott Glenn and knocks him off the <laughs> yeah, road. Yeah, what, what he was really that does. about? He does. So I don't even know what they take him. They take him in for being vagrants, for looting. Wearing too much denim. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think I read, I think Scott Glenn was in his 30s in this. Is this his first movie or his first no. credit? Really? No. But he is wearing a Canadian tuxedo. He's got a denim jacket, denim pants, denim shirt, denim everything. <laughs> what did I say? A Canadian tuxedo? Yes, that's very awesome. That's what I meant to say. Okay, good. The scene where the gargoyles like bust into their motel room? Yes. Which their motel room is like a whole like floor of a house or something. It has a couple of big spaces. Yeah. So one gargoyle's like in the bathroom, like, you know, trying up makeup and shit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think They're so. looking for the skull, right? I guess. But also, Mommy's not there, so they're going to try her lipstick on and stuff. <laughs> Cornell is wearing, like, 
Aladdin pants, like kind of these like <laughs> flowy, like he looks like the bottoms are just a ge- genie's pants. Mm-hmm. One gargoyle shuts the bathroom door just to make it explode from the inside. Yes. <laughs> it was already open. He was just causing as much damage as he could. There's like three or four of the gargoyles that are just coming to ravage their bedroom and steal the skull, right? Right. Why Why is every action scene for the <laughs> gargoyles? Yeah. We sped up the car chases. I was thinking about that, too. And if it was in regular, uh, at regular speed, I mean, I think the slow motion does make it slightly creepier. Maybe. Their makeup alone, it's not, like, terrifying. Right. And these guys, the whoever, you know, they look kind of like the drones. They just have, like, beaks. Yes. You know? They kind of look like the uh, sleeve stacks and Yeah, Land I was going to say the same exact thing. Maybe. I wonder if that's the same costume they just repurposed. Well, yeah. I thought if they didn't slow it down, the creases and the folds and the rubber costume might be more apparent or something. Mm-hmm. Cornell chases the gargoyles off. And one of them crossing the street is hit by a semi. Uh, it's almost like he throws himself in front of a semi. It's <laughs> it, it looked very avoidable. <laughs> it did, but the semi driver didn't stop either. He's like, no, yeah, not like another, another goddamn, goddamn gargoyle. We're <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna say the exact same thing. But this is where we get actually get a good view because. A good view of Cornell's <laughs> upper body. He wants to tend to the gargoyle, but he doesn't yeah. want to touch it at the same time. So yeah, like, well, uh... that, that's how you get salmonella. But the, you can see the makeup in the face and the eyes that seem kind of glow behind the makeup. That yeah. looks pretty goddamn cool. It, really it does. does. This, Yeah, when he's like kind of tending to the almost dead one, it does look cool. And so many times where you like see the actor's uh, teeth like underneath the, yes. the costume, you know, <laughs> even that didn't look bad. So do you think they had those like back then they were just those completely blind contact lenses, oh, you know, that's why he got hit by the car. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it probably didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> what if they what if that wasn't actually in the movie but they right. a actor actually wandered out into the highway and got it well you know he would want us to keep the footage i would say but i mean <laughs> who knows because he is dead i feel like in the 70s there were a lot of like on set deaths that they're just like huh mm. well he knew the risks yep <laughs> that's right so now uh I can't. Grayson. Her name is Grayson. What? Oh, Grayson Hall. She looks like she's ready to party. Yeah. She's been running this uh, hotel slash brothel for years now. Right. (laughs) Being the only hooker in the brothel. I wouldn't go so far. I wouldn't call her a hooker. You want to call her a hooker? Floozy. Maybe boozy floozy. Boozy floozy. There you go. Yeah, but she does always have that, like, jelly jar full of wine or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Jennifer Salt's kind of, uh, is she, like, kind of horny for Scott Glenn? So she's become kind of a, uh, you know, social justice person. She's, like, arguing for... Uh, Yeah, they they kind of locked eyes. Yeah, a little bit. Well, also, she is wearing an even more sheer and brawless top. Right, but she, she has an overshirt. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that that she loses pretty quickly <laughs> <laughs> yeah come on guys but this was tv this was 70s tv yeah that's true this is actually pretty risque i think for 72 having her run around like that yeah for 72 tv anyway right this is like such a circular like they go back to the hotel and basically the same scene happens again yes They've got the dead one on the bed, and his buddies come to kind of bust him out. Yes. And they're basically like in a little Congo line by the front door. And also all the other gargoyles I just noticed kind of have different makeup. Yeah. It's almost like they had 
a limited amount of time to make these oh, costumes. I'm, so <laughs> I think I read this whole thing was filmed in like 18 days. Yeah, right. Didn't isn't there some bit of trivia be, that someone backed out of it because they thought it, maybe like the first director or something backed out? I did read something like that. Yeah, because whoever's producing it was like, okay, you got this, this, and this, and it's got to be done like next week. There it goes. It was uh, Bill Norton was a replacement for a previous director who turned down the project because he thought it was impossible to shoot the film in 18 days. Apparently not when you just have the same scene happening over and over yeah. again. <laughs> there is some pretty cool... I mean, the way Willie's place blew up is... I mean, I guess setting a building on fire is like no big deal, but that looked kind of cool. And Didn't they burn down the hotel at the end of the movie? Yes, I think so. Okay, we'll talk about that soon, too. Jennifer Salt goes to the sheriff's department basically to try to get help because the gargoyles broke in. Yeah, okay. So, and happened? then Scott Glenn just happened to be there. So she's like, You still have these guys locked up? And they can't get a hold of the sheriff because he's already gone. Went home to drink and scream at his wife. Yeah. So she goes back to the hotel. The gargoyles are just out there when Cornell Wilde grabs her and puts her inside. They lock themselves in the little hotel room. He puts a four-pound TV tray in front of the door. And a tiny little, like, balsa wood chair. And it basically just fucking explodes when the stuntman hits it once. Yes. Like, good job, Dad. Great. Dad, are you doing this on purpose? You want me to go with them, don't you? You want me to get abducted by the gargoyles, don't you? That's why you bought all these flimsy little bandana tops for me. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a closer look at the other, like, type of suit. Yeah. And it looks kind of cool. They definitely don't look like gargoyles, but... They kind of look like horny toads. You remember horny toads? Like yes, yes. I saw that one's face. I thought about that. Yeah, yeah. They're in the car. Yeah. The gargoyle rips the door off of the car. T they take her away yeah. and and basically just kind of backhands bonk. Cornell. <laughs> yeah, he gets pimp slapped. <laughs> He's instantly out. And turning this car over on its hood. Yeah, that had to be, that thing probably weighs mm -hmm. fucking 2,000. It's a giant station wagon. It was cool. I think I remembered this in, as a kid, too. Mm -hmm. It really shows kind of like the sheer power of the gargoyles. It was kind of believable in 72. Yeah, it looked cool. And that's when you get the first view of Bernie Casey up right. with his wings. Yeah, and he looks badass. Because he just kind of reveals himself. And he by far has the best oh, yeah. like <laughs> costume, you know. And he does look like a devil. He has big devil horns, and the wings are very cool. They don't start at his shoulders. They sort of start in the middle of his back. Yeah. And uh, they look really badass. And that little slow motion scene where she's on the ground, and he kind of quickly in slow motion somehow kind of just... Yes. Hovers over her, jumps down and like hovers over her. That was pretty damn cool, I thought. That looked pretty fucking cool. And he starts touching her hair and checking her out. He definitely wants <laughs> he to take does. the top off because it literally is held huh? together by. He swipes at this tie in the front. One like... tug. Yeah. But no boobs because this yep. is TV movie. We're going to show you everything but. Glad that uh, Miss Parks didn't have a nip slip or anything. <laughs> oh, my God. She does break into the sheriff's desk drawer, and she's just like... I'll have some of this. He's like, this is the third report today, <laughs> and it's all bullshit. You just want to come in and drink my booze. That's my sheriff booze. So, But the gargoyles have been running all night to get her back to the cave. Bernie Casey has wings. Yeah. Well, and they also want their they also want their brother, I assume. But they've been running all night and it's they don't get to the cave until morning. The sun is up. Yeah. He has been carrying <laughs> yeah. this hundred and twelve pound girl for miles. <laughs> Time and space in this movie are questionable. You never know 
how far the hotel is away from their cave and how far the jail is away from the hotel. They don't ever show you any of but that. But they don't hesitate really to show you the gargoyles in light. They they wanted to show off this makeup. Yeah, and one right when they're going in, you know, you see that kind of matronly yes. gargoyle, you know. It kind of turns around and heads towards the cave and basically looks like it has a like a saggy diaper on, <laughs> like a saggy diaper that has leaked. They couldn't figure out butts, you know, how to make yeah. like a monster butt. How to make a monster butt. That is your new coffee book table, right? Coffee mm-hmm. table book. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Coffee I've table had one book. beer. One beer. <laughs> Because we got the Mrs. What's her face going to the sheriff. Parks. Everybody basically is going to end up going to find the girl that's that been abducted by the gargoyles. Right. So we're forming our own posse, which includes everyone in the town. Yeah, basically everybody else in the movie except for uh, Diana and the gargoyle. Well, except for Buddy, the, uh, ah. the gas attendant. They should have thrown him in for just some fodder. Was he not the one that was driving the chick back into town? Oh, my God. Maybe yeah. so. <laughs> so it literally the is entire the entire cast. cast. Cornell needs a Band-Aid, and it, you have to think that they've got a first aid <laughs> kit or something there. This is a big open wound on his forehead. <laughs> so we left Diana with Bernie Casey in Stan Winston makeup, sniffing her hair and tugging at her top. Mm-hmm. Okay, here here we are. I'm sorry. Convoy was performed by Bill Fries, who also, he has a soundtrack credit on Mystery Science Theater. What? Yeah. Okay. It was on Reptilicus. Oh, okay, that's fine. New MST. Okay. Okay, so you think that the gargoyles are... This is kind of like a, a... Not quite a Shyamalan twist, but you think that the gargoyles are just kind of like mindless monsters, sort of, because all they've done so far is just break balsa wood doors and tiny mm. little tables. What did Cornell <laughs> Wilde think that was going to... Uh, this is going to buy us a few seconds. Yes. <laughs> all it did was... The lamp was on that thing. The light went out when he busted it. That's so many... Anyway, but maybe that just speaks more to the uh, construction of stuff back in the 70s. Right. But riddle me this. Now, I swear in the dialogue that Bernie Casey says they've only been awake for two weeks. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was hoping you could clarify a little bit. Because oh, I I couldn't figure out if they were... Old creatures that had been hibernating, which I think that's what it is. I think that's what it they, is, too. They weren't just birthed two weeks ago. They they had been hibernating or in some type of, like, uh... Suspended animation. Yes. Sure. Okay. So, but where do all these eggs come from? So that's basically, they... There's a whole cave full. There's a whole clan yeah. of... Of gargoyles and a ton of eggs. Right. So somebody's a doing the nasty. Yeah. Which can be seen on uh, at 49.02. Oh, man. Oh, I'm almost there. Bernie Casey's talking to the uh, the matriarch uh-huh. about, you know, the eggs hatching or what. She turns and he slaps her on the ass. Oh yeah, as he, she goes back. He does. He gives her like a good game. He does a locker room. Yeah, grab ass. <laughs> what was that about? Letting you know that yeah, even old ancient creatures can get it on. <laughs> it was like Bernie Casey was like, "Get out of here, baby." Yeah, <laughs> I may be green and slimy. <laughs> I don't want you to see what I'm going to do to this human woman. Just <laughs> go take a nap. It's my Bernie Casey voice. Not very good. So that little bit of emotion and, you know, and she hugs him when he comes in, mm-hmm. you know, and she's like stressed out and crying. We're calling her the matronly sure. gargoyle, but it's only because she's the only one that has like, would you say like female features and a wig? Right. 
Basically, every gargoyle looks different than the one beside it. They could have made him look all the same. That was an interesting choice. But then also that just, and that they have, like, you know, they're emotional. They're, you know, and even that ass slap is like a, a sign of community mm. and love. And it was a, it wasn't, he wasn't being mean. No, no, he, he was like, we're going to make some eggs later. Yeah, exactly. So do you think that she's the only female? Mm. I don't want to get into no. like the actual like maybe that's why she's crying. She's like I can't I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> but no, she I mean she's obviously crying because one of them died, right? Got hit by a semi. Right. That had to be it. This cave that they're in with the gargoyles, though, it seems to go on for a while. This looks more like natural than it. I don't think they could actually con- construct it as No, set no, you're right. Movie. You're right. There's no was... way. It almost looks like kind of like a, uh, you know, something you'd take a tour like through. Carl's Bad yeah, Cavern. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, man. And he, <laughs> she did lose that khaki shirt pretty quick. Mm hmm. I can see most of her skin. Barely covering her. But yeah, the cave does look pretty cool. Oh, hey, look, here in the trivia, during the ride from the airport to Uncle Willie's place, you can see the knee of the sound man. Oh, in the he was back laying seat of down. the station wagon. I thought it was his head. I thought you were going to say, you can see Jennifer Salt's nipples. Here. <laughs> oh, wow. <well>. Very prominent. <laughs> Sorry, just reading through trivia here. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I got lost too. Okay, I, I dig this. So we have Grayson. I, can't, I don't know why I can't remember her character name. Miss Parks. Miss Parks. Miss Drunk <laughs> not, Parks. Not Miss Parts. Are you saying it with a T or a K? A K. Okay, because if it was Miss Parts, that would be gross. I want to <laughs> see her parts. But Buddy is driving her into town. Oh, okay. To go get backup. Okay. Right? Go get the state sheriffs, the state police, or whatever. Get any, they say it's going to take two hours to get there. So they're really in the middle of nowhere. Right. Or that's just them like stopping off for snacks and, and a quickie. And... Ugh, buddy and Miss Parks. <laughs> mm, you think that hasn't happened before? Oh, I'm, sh- I'm sure in this town. I'm pretty sure that's what uh, John Cougar Mellencamp sang about. Oh, uh, really? What what song was that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what, when they find their car, that, that truck just doing circles out in the, yeah. out, out in the open there. That, I thought that was pretty cool. They were, so they're driving away, and you could see the gargoyle hand in the back creeping up on them. You know, yeah. they had some creepy, cool scenes yeah. in it that have been used time and time again before and since. Mm-hmm. Yes. When they show Mrs. Parks, there's a scene with Scott Glenn, another one of the motorcyclists. You know, they're doing something to their bikes, right? And I think another sheriff's car is there. Okay. And they just look up to see her hanging from the telephone Oh, pole yeah. Upside down. That was pretty freaking creepy. Yeah, that was creepy. This is a really good movie. Everybody is just formed a posse. Yeah, so everybody, have... whatever vehicle you want to drive or get or ride. We've got horses, motorcycles, trucks. There's a dog. It's basically everybody in the town. But I want to know how this, how Buddy's truck got to closer where they were with the gargoyles <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah than the rest of this crew right this like he's the only one that knows of a shortcut <laughs> are we to assume that this big bag of stuff is that has to be wine right cuz he they've got a uh a... that's hooked onto the side of the truck <laughs> yeah yeah, hanging from the mirror. I've never seen such a thing. It's a canteen, or it's like a... Uh, Huge saddlebag saddle canteen bag, yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, that's what, they're just drinking water out of an old saddlebag. Oh, <laughs> sounds gross. <laughs> Cornell Wilde's backwash in there. Because they both take a big drink out of it. Scott spits it slosh out. Slosh it around and then spit it. Yeah. They both spit it out. Yeah. It's like... This is just your rinsing water. Exactly. This ain't your drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I wish this was 
Sharkleberry or you know whatever, but <laughs> not Sharkleberry. Uh. <laughs> white. Were you going with something White Claw? <laughs> white Claw, yeah, a seltzer, like a sparkling water. I kind of forgot what they were doing, and then like, oh yeah, we're trying to save Diana. <laughs> Cornell Wild makes like a giant leap of like four inches. He makes it look like he's really look like he's Mannix or something. Okay, hang on a second. The the car with the stone on the accelerator. What? Right. what? The gargoyles did that? Yes, I suppose so, because there's blood in the front seat. It looks like ragu. It's like a weird orangey. Yeah. But so why, why did they do that? He looks at it when he gets up out of there like, I didn't sit in that, did I? Yeah, oh, hell. And his gun kind of falls out of his holster. He's a horrible <laughs> sheriff. This is the most action they've seen in, in years. I'm surprised he has not shot his foot off yet. She's having a really deep, like, intellectual conversation with Bernie. Which she seems to have no problem with. Yeah, she's not scared at all. She's not in distress. I guess when your dad's a demonologist, (laughs) there's not a lot that is going to rattle you, you know? And I'm I'm sticking with the slow motion. It, It does look cool. I mean... Like what you were saying earlier about the makeup and stuff, it does mm. give you more time to be like, <laughs> you know, that's just a oversized wetsuit. But I, did they have to do it in every scene right. that the gargoyles are in? I guess they just thought it made it look cooler, but... Are they trying to make feature length? Oh, well, maybe so. <laughs> just kind of padding it out by... I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> He's basically flipping through an old book. Does he know how to read? Yeah. He's the smartest, right? He's Un- the- unclear. Because, like you said earlier, he was encouraging them to talk, right? His other... Yes. So maybe We're he... thinking about this too much. I, I don't know. But that's the big question. Although, if they're so smart, Bernie Casey's made some blunders so far. Mm-hmm. He's not a good leader. I think he just saw Diana. He was like, whoa. I think he was looking for another way to perpetuate his race. Or species, if you I know, should say. If you know what I mean. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of old. So, okay. We go back and forth. It's night again. Yeah. <laughs> They've been searching all day for Diana and these caves. This movie is either... Occurs during like a weeks or hours. Hard We're to not say. sure. But they've been out all day. And like I said, yeah, uh, Cornell pulls up in his Bronco thing mm-hmm. uh, to where Scott Glenn and one other cyclist, they're like arbitrarily turning knobs on their motorcycle. Yeah, like tightening bolts. Yeah, that that's better. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you see that? But the one of them just turns and says, "What's that up there?" <laughs> <laughs> and they've been they've been tuning up their bike right underneath it, underneath her hanging from this telephone. Pole. Yeah, and she doesn't look dead. I almost nope. kind of wanted them to like. She's like, "Help me!" But <laughs> it's just. I guess maybe gravity is holding her eyelids open. Yeah, maybe. She's also kind of hung like the hanged man in like tarot cards. Like one of her legs is oh. bent. I'm sure that's not. Oh. I'm sure that's not on purpose. <laughs> it's really weird, though. I guess they figured the gargoyles can fly, so they wanted to put her up high somewhere. Maybe. I'm still baffled by the truck thing, but anyway. So the your band of of merry men that are helping out for nothing is breaking up. Yeah. So three of the cyclists start to take off. And I don't think it's because that's just the way it was written is mm-hmm. that they couldn't be on scene because they had to go put on the, the costumes to be the guard. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think we, so too. We do not have enough actors in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot have you in the same scene. It'd be funny <laughs> if they pan down from like the polka dotted hat guy and he's just got one gargoyle hand and one regular hand. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, I have to, like, say, if that's the case, 
how this was like filmed and stuff with like one camera. It's pretty good. I mean, I I couldn't do. <laughs> they all made this. the most of it. Yeah. This this is by far a way better movie than Beware the Blob. Wow. Yeah, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> But take that, Hagman. Yeah. <laughs> Did they bury Larry Hagman in just a giant hat? He demanded it. Yeah. <laughs> they find the cave and the gargoyles. Uh, when he, Bernie Casey is up there kind of mounted in front of them and, te- you know, ordering them to attack. Yeah, he's laughing like a maniac or like kind of screaming. There is probably 15 gargoyles there in costume. Standing yeah. at the mouth of the cave. We've never seen... There's been like three of them, and like one of them's dead. Mm-hmm. They're really ineffectual. They killed Buddy and an old lady, but then when they're confronted with these guys, that one guy, they just kind of pawed him. <laughs> and he's he's dead. <laughs> I guess we're meant to think that they were like really like digging their claws in, but they really yes, very sharp claws. They're basically just like kind of rubbing him. <laughs> but that one does that like straight leg like jump up onto the Bronco hood. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Our friend JJ Varnell could do that. He could jump up onto the roof of his car <laughs> from just standing straight. That's, that's unnatural. And now Ber- there's a gargoyle there, riding a horse. There's a gargoyle that looks like a has a praying mantis head. Yes, I saw that. I actually kind of liked that. But that's really like, okay, guys, we're getting to the bottom of the, <laughs> the makeup box. <laughs> we're just going to put some old, like, motorcycle goggles and spray paint your head green. When they start launching themselves off the little mm-hmm. trampolines... Yes. <laughs> and flying over. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's fun. Also, earlier when they were in that big scene with the kind of matronly one, and she's still talking to him, that one hatches, you know? Yes. And they pull a straight up kid out of there, you yes. know? I mean, I'm sure it's a little boy. It did not look like a little person. You know what I mean? No. No, it looked like a, a young child. Yes. And I'm like, man, that kid had all that makeup on. Surely they were like... Maybe, you know, like uh, breaking a couple of like <laughs> child labor laws or something. I didn't see him credited in the movie at all. Yeah, probably because he's dead. <laughs> like I said, in the 70s, it was like acceptable losses if you could, you know. Just write them off the script. Yeah. So the big attack from the gargoyles and Cornell Wilde is just an ace with a shotgun. Yeah. He is blowing them back and forth. One of them freaking just tackles, just clips him. (laughs) I saw that. As it runs by. Kind of gave him like a shoulder check or something. Like they were playing field hockey. But again, Cornell Wilde is a demonologist. He's probably killed many demons, right? Is that what a demonologist does? So Bernie Casey comes up at the end of it riding a horse. and yeah. Even though I guess the shotgun was empty because Cornell was just going to use it as a bat to swing at him. That's their that's the go to move in any movie, I think, is to finally use the weapon as just a blunt instrument. OK, so Bernie Casey basically says, come with me if you want to see your daughter. Cornell's just like jogging after him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, OK, I guess this is what that's what we're doing now. I trust you implicitly. But when they get into the cave, he's kind of taken like a, a it almost looked like he's been beaten up a little bit more. As he, he got smacked on the head. Yeah, he's already smacked on the head. He got roughed up. Well, he got shoulder okay. checked by that one guy and then kind of <laughs> twirled to the ground. Bernie Casey knocks him off of that little thing that they were on. <laughs> and when he gets up, uh, it's almost like the actor Cornell Wilde is trying to decide like, where he's hurt at, and he kind of settles on his arm. He kind of rubs his arm a little bit. Like, you just fell like 12 feet onto your back. When Bernie throws him, though, he just cackles. He's standing up there with his wings yeah. spread and just cackles. <laughs> yeah. I throw you, puny man. Yeah. 
emotionally, he's kind of all <laughs> over the map. I would think that gargoyles would be more straight laced. Yeah. Bernie Casey sounds like a he's like a gargoyle professor or something. <laughs> he's a professor of the gargoyle arts. Mm-hmm. Gargoyle studies. So he's got Diana and the matronly gargoyle pulls Cornell Wilde off like maybe they're going to get their own room. And I must say, Diana doesn't seem to, I mean, she's like, this is our first (laughs) date. I'm not going to let you, you know, and they look like they've just been like smoking a joint, had a couple of glasses of wine, just reading some books. Yeah, he he creeps down on her, though. It's kind of suspenseful. Yes. You wonder what he's going to do. Well, you got to remember it's made for TV. Yeah. Can you imagine if this was rated R? That's the movie I want to see. Director's cut. (laughs) The Snyder cut of Gargoyles. Yeah, so now we get to see another one of these Gargoyles, which we saw snippets of the the eggs hatching in the very opening when Mm -hmm. they were doing the, the, Mm -hmm. the exposition at the beginning. These baby gargoyles are ugly. I'm just going to say it. I'm saying it right there. Yeah, they are. One of them comes out and kind of looks like the baby from Dead Alive. I don't know (laughs) if you remember. There's like (laughs) an ugly baby. And it's just got like stuff Mm -hmm. on its face, like kind of slime on its face. But that's just the way I think about all of kids. (laughs) You know, (laughs) this just confirms it. Okay, so the matriarch comes to get Cornell Wilde. I think she said that she was going to take her to take him to her daughter, his daughter. God damn. I can't even talk. Take him to his daughter. But it kind of seemed like she just wanted to get him alone, too. Right. Exactly. That's what I thought was going to happen. Uh, But if it did, we don't see it because it's a made for TV movie. Did, Did you get that that the matriarch was a little jealous over Diana, so she yeah, was so trying she to she wanted her own. There's a whole thing playing out with her and Bernie Casey that isn't included in the movie. Well, uh, they probably were trying to branch off into a 70s sitcom, and it just did not take out. Right, yeah. like a Three's Company where one of them's a gargoyle. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Cornell Wilde, when he gets a shotgun in his hands, he looks like he's never lived <laughs> until this moment. Like, he is having... The time of his life. I mean, and really, as a demonologist... Exactly. This is this is the highlight of your career right here. I hate it that James Cameron stole the end of this movie with Scott Glenn like putting the gasoline all over the eggs and stuff. Scott Glenn wastes no time to grab two gas cans and run up the hill to go into the cave. Yeah. He's the real hero. He doesn't owe these people anything. If anything, they've been shitty to him. The entire time. You sort of expect him and Diana to have this thing, you know? Yes. Since they're the only two, you know, young, (laughs) good-looking people in the entire movie. Uh, But that never happens, because it's a TV movie, and we ain't got a lot of time. We need to move it along. But, yes, as you said, Cornell, he is a freaking as a badass he is a gargoyle killer yes and his pants those dockers obviously have some kind of stretching technology (laughs) because he is he is really hard on him this is a good action sequence for him he's one of those older actors that's like uh, he's like kind of a tough guy he was 60 when this came out jesus yeah he's having a blast he has like a bloodlust, but I guess it's because Diana's right there. But um, I don't like that he he kind of bonked the the female gargoyle on the yes, kind of like on her hump. Well, that was an interesting thing. Okay, let me back up because I'm catching up to you here. Scott Glenn okay. sets all the eggs on fire yes. and then gets sacrificing attacked. himself for people that he doesn't even know their names mm-hmm. probably. But I think that that's you know there wasn't anything else going on. But those eggs had to be very flammable. They exploded. <laughs> they, <laughs> they went up. The way they edited that, it almost looks like Scott Glenn explodes. He lights that thing with all the gargoyles around him. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a big kind of like a explosion. 
and you don't see those gargoyles and you don't see him. It's like they all just like spontaneously combusted. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. The showdown between Cornell Wilde and Bernie Casey. They've been talking and they knows that he can reason with him. I... Yeah. Uh-huh. He hits the he damages the one's wing. Right. I guess it doesn't kill her, right. but she does look very fragile. Like she's an old gargoyle. So that's when he was like, hey, I want my daughter. You want to live and perpetuate your species? Here's your chance. Grab her and right. get the hell out of here and I'll do the same. Yeah. We'll pretend this never happened. <laughs> right. Exactly. They all just walk away. It's like a, it's like they went to a key party together yeah. and they just don't want to look each other in the face. Not a good ending. No. It was not a very satisfying ending. Just to see the gargoyle with his his wingspan that <laughs> could not hold the mass of what he is. <laughs> he never got up high enough to where he was just going to glide. <laughs> so it's not like the wings are just for show. Yeah. They must have they have some other means of propulsion but that's what made me think of because she mentions the matriarch mentions that when the little boy was born or when the little gargoyle sorry don't mean to put up gender on a gargoyle when it was born he was a breeder but he had wings as well so it made you think that okay oh, the ones with wings are the only ones that can breed the other ones are just slea stacks I think all that type of stuff was thought about like way later. <laughs> like, oh shit, maybe we should explain some of this stuff. But they never do. Now I'm just left with so many questions. <laughs> like, how did they think that last like flying scene looked good? Yes. I guess that was on the eighth or ninth day. It was like, all right. We got to wrap this, this up. That's all we got. But they could have done it in the shadows, because I, I thought they played really well with the shadows. I think they're doing a lot of, like, day for night type of stuff, you know, just with the, like, it's full daylight, but they just... That's why in the pitch of night, when they fly away, you can see the shadow on the rocks. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Doesn't quite add up. But, I mean, all in all, it gave a young man named Stan Winston another credit, and... Did now? Did I read that this this was his first film? Was it the first one? I thought I read that somewhere. I don't know, but creators of Gargoyle makeup: Ellis Berman and Stan Winston. According to Uncle Willie, the Native American, presumably Hopi or Navajo, name for the okay. gargoyle is the Nakatachinko. Yes, where Bruce Willis went, and yes. The plaza. Mm, mm, mm. Wait, that's not the shared universe? <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. That would be cool. What if there was just a gargoyle right in the middle of Die Hard? That would have been awesome. He was behind the whole thing. Mm hmm. So while the dance that summons them is referred to them as the Nonataya. Okay, right. That's what Willie was talking about. Right. I think King of the Hill mentions that when Bobby's trying to join the Order of the Straight Arrow. <laughs> right. No, wait, that's Weematanya. Anyway. Again, why would you know that? I... Or why wouldn't I know that? So, yeah, I have such strong feelings about this movie. And still do, like, the parts that scared me when I was a kid I are the parts that I enjoy now you know mm -hmm. and finding out that it had to be filmed in like a little over a week makes a lot of you know that explains a lot yes. of things but yeah still love it still love those made for tv movies we gotta do we gotta do the one with kim darby not terrence trent darby no see in a made for tv movie which one was it the heck's the name of that don't be afraid of the dark is that right about the little things all right, I'm looking up Kim Darby. As I, I don't know why I don't have her on speed tab or something, you know. Yeah. Do they have that? Aren't we talking about calling this the Darbcast? Darbcast. No, oh, that was the Dabcast. It was still, it would have worked. What if Dabney and Darby... <laughs> Wait, 
<laughs> that would if, if they had married and he had taken her name, he'd, his name would be Dabney Darby. <laughs> was that was that worth it? Was that worth the joke? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> we'll see if we'll see how many downloads this gets. Do we lose a few? Yeah. Don't be afraid of the dark. 1973 TV movie. Is that what I said? Don't be afraid. I think of the so. Dark. A couple inherits an old mansion inhabited by by a small start over. Let's try it again. This this deserves better. A young couple inherits a mansion inhabited by small demon like oh, creatures. Minute. I thought you said better. Who are determined to make the wife one of their own. <laughs> Still a wacky sitcom. I swear I like to read them. No, I don't remember seeing this. Really? 1973 TV movie from October 1973. An hour and 14 minutes long. Well, I remember it being good, and hmm. I think Guillermo del Toro made a remake of it. I could be wrong about that. All these made-for-TV movies are so cheesy. And granted, TV back then probably wasn't given half of the budget. I mean, they spend a lot of money on TV now. The budgets are oh, way yeah, higher yeah, yeah. for TV now from back then. They were like, all right, that's why probably these costumes were borrowed from another set. Even. Yeah, sure. And just kind of retrofitted. <laughs> they had all these rubber suits before and said, here, we were going to throw these out anyway. You just Yeah, Roger Corman made a you know, shit movie a couple yeah. of weeks ago and he just left all this stuff. We're just going to have to hose them out and put them on. But a fun movie. I think maybe it's because they have to get creative about some of this stuff because they don't have the money that makes it good. You know, I'm with you. Or they're just like, man, let's get in there and crank this thing out and f forget it ever happened. Uh, it says here, the scenes with the gargoyles running and moving were slowed down to give the gargoyles an unnatural jerky quality. Like the Jerky Boys? Uh, achievement one. Yeah, some of that worked. <laughs> the hotel in the film was an old out-of-business hotel near Carlsbad, New Mexico. It was actually burned down for the film. The ruins were later recorded as a historical archaeological site with the New Mexico Department of Historic Preservation. So did they did they burn down an archaeological site or did they decide that oh this movie was made yeah. here and this is is it an archaeological site because gargoyles was filmed there? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, they need to remake hmm. this. I think think it's worth a remake. I think so, but you know how hard it is to like narrow it down to. I mean, everything that I searched for before was obviously the cartoon from, like, the 90s. Yes. Now, no association between I these two? I don't think... It has more association with, like, that episode of Tales from the Dark Side where the guy, where the artists, <laughs> you know... Isn't that Lisa Bonet? No, that was uh, Ray Don Chong. Ray Don Chong and um, the guy from The Warriors. Uh, Michael Beck? No, um, the other main guy. Uh, crap, I can't think of his name. <laughs> My mind just went blank. Uh, oh, the gargoyle from uh, the Tales from the Dark Side movie. There we go. James Remar is who I was trying to think of. Oh, He's right. the artist. Yeah. And she says, we can we can just have sex all the time and hang out. <laughs> uh, if you don't tell anybody that I'm a gargoyle, and you know what, he fucking tells people. But you can't, you can't. That's something you can't keep under your belt, though. You'd be like, hey, I gotta get this off my chest. Yeah, you don't. You can't go to tell your priest. No, I mean, no, definitely no, not. That wouldn't work. <laughs> no, just get drunk at a bar and tell some random person. I don't remember how that actually happens. To tell you the truth. I remember seeing the the Tales from the Dark Side movie at the theater. Mm -hmm. Didn't it also have Christian Slater in one of the episodes? Yes. It was a big Christian it Slater. It has everybody in it. Steve Buscemi. 
uh, Julian Moore. Oh, right. David Johansson. Yeah. Or <laughs> also known as Buster Poindexter. Yeah, Buster Poindexter. Couldn't quite yes. think of it. He was in the New York Dolls. He was in Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, he was. Niagara Falls. <laughs> Uh, William Hickey. Oh, the oldest man in... He was old before he was actually old. Yes. Robert Klein. There's James Remar. <laughs> Who's Robert Klein in that movie? Why, why is he... That in... movie sounds wild. I need to go revisit it. Anyway. Love the TV movies. I think we'll probably do... A few more. A few more. A f- Easy. This was, I think, our oldest film, was it not? 72? That's yeah. That's about as early as we've done. Yeah. You're right. So that makes this movie just as old as I am. Wow. Who And who held up more? We're going to find out next episode. <laughs> next, next time on Press Your Luck. Right? <laughs> okay. So you're going to post a picture of yourself on Twitter. And then a picture of Bernie Casey laughing maniacally as a gargoyle. <laughs> and we're going to have a vote. Have a poll. Take a look at the ratio. Who held up better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Well, I think we did it. I think we did something. <laughs> Definitely did something. I think we raised awareness for this uh, awesome old movie. Raised awareness. <laughs> We should have Gargoyle Awareness Month. It'll be like the month after Toyotathon. They've got like the early fall. Isn't it Ford Truck Month? Yeah, Ford Truck Month is in... I think that might be going on right now. I'll have to check. (laughs) All right. Let's wrap this up with just saying, hey, uh, go visit our website. Check it out. We got some new things coming in. Hopefully we'll get some uh, different t-shirts up there soon and uh, sell some merch. Yeah. Check out our merch. Check out our blog. There's going to be some uh, fun stuff, right? Yes. I got my tank top in the other day and I must say it looks pretty cool. I love wearing my tank top and my new mask, actually. Oh, yeah. You got a mask. That mask is pretty uh, silky. I kind of enjoy the the fabric. (laughs) Okay. It's a lot bigger than I expected, too. So it really... It fits a fat face. Yeah. I mean, that uh, that should be a good selling point right there. It's just like a loose kind of pair of panties that you've just strapped around your face. Yes. <laughs> that says moratorium on it. Yes. That's... We need to get some panties up there. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely work on that. Hey, at this point, you throw a few bucks my way, I'll even sell you my dirty panties. Oh, no. Like those Japanese no, that sound vending as... machines? <laughs> that does not sound very enticing no, at all. it doesn't at all. I think I do better with threatening. Yes. You know, I will send you a pair of my dirty panties unless you buy some of our merch. It's not, it's not a bad angle. Well, anyway. All right. That'll be edited down. <laughs> okay, don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. We can say everything we want to and just edit it later. All right, well, um, All right. see you guys. Bye-bye. been listening to the moratorium an empty cornfield production for more fun and stupidity stay tuned next week jason and i break down this 1972 late night tv horror flick and then take a peek into some interesting careers of a few character actors we also continue our quest with a new segment aptly named the goratorium check out our website for everything moratorium including movie links movie reviews merch, and more. Again, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We appreciate your support. 
If you have any movie suggestions or just want to tell us how much we really suck, you can contact us at moviemoratorium at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and long live VHS. Not like another, another goddamn, goddamn gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs>